for the one hour lecture today, I'm just wrapping up particle physics, and I really want you to give you an overview of the standard model. And um, it's because I'm essentially trying to project this poster, um, a bigger screen, the easier. And um, for the first overview, I will tell you that I had to specifically go find, uh, um, I had to specifically find a uh, version of this poster that's out of date. <laughs> so the most up-to-date version kind of includes some complications that I would rather introduce under modern tweaks. Um, so I want to first give you the overall basic features and overall structure first. And that's easier with the, uh, this older edition. I think this one was probably produced in 2012 or something. So, um, so this is the poster that Oh, I see. So this is the poster that, that, I think that is the exactly this poster. Yeah, so that is this poster. Um, if you've looked at it, then you've seen this. So this is the kind of overview of the standard model, what we know about particles. There are elementary fermions, elementary bosons. Um, they also go by the name of uh, force carriers. Force carriers and um, so these, uh, um, so these are the particles that we know about, and these particles participate in these four fundamental interactions: um, gravitational force, which we don't really deal with in particle physics, uh, weak um, electromagnetic force, which we know the best about, and the new things that we are talking about in the last couple of weeks: the weak and strong nuclear forces. And in the standard model, one of the big feature of what makes the standard model standard model is the, what's called the electroweak unification. So here under bosons, it actually, you know, even the older version uh, puts it under unified electroweak uh, bosons. And so photon is grouped together with the W boson and the Z boson. And um, I guess this uh, work was done in the 1980s, I think. So I think I told some of you that there have been no new discoveries in physics for the last 30 years or 40 years. Uh, that's uh, what I'm referring to. This big uh, structural foundation <coughs> of what we still call um, cutting edge particle physics was all settled in the 1980s possibly before I was born. Um, so, so that's the standard model. And now there were some unverified features that, um, that's in the updated version that we'll talk about in about 20, 30 minutes. And I guess, so this is the good kind of, um, you, know, you know, good uh, poster to look at and we'll zoom into some different sections of it to just highlight the things that we've been talking about. The things we hopefully feel, uh, com uh, well, begin to feel familiar with. And uh, we'll spend a little more time actually looking at the properties of these things. So, the, um, so these are probably the particles that you are, well, okay, and probable <laughs> is not a good <laughs> word. <laughs> um, so in terms of your level of familiarity before this class, there aren't that many particles here that you would be familiar with already. So there's the, uh, there's the electron that hopefully you feel familiar with. <laughs> um, and you actually have to scroll down here for proton and neutron for familiar particles. But those are not elementary particles <laughs> in our uh, discretion of particle physics. So we have to start off with here, um, as um, unfamiliar as you are. Um, even quark, so um, I guess what you ought to feel more familiar with is the up and down quarks, if uh, only nothing else, because these make up the particles that you are familiar with, <laughs> protons and neutrons. Um, so, so these are the 12 elementary fermions, not counting their antiparticles. So um, we talked about the, the concept of antiparticles. They are covered, uh, wait, I thought it was covered in this uh, poster somewhere. Where's the antiparticle? 
uh, matter and antimatter. So um, for every particle type, there's a corresponding antiparticle type denoting a bar, blah, blah, blah. Uh, particle and antiparticle have identical mass and spin, uh, but opposite charges. Um, some electrical and neutral bosons are their own antiparticles. Okay? That's a good short summary of what antiparticles are. So in most of these uh, charts, antiparticles are not explicitly listed. So here we have 12 elementary fermion matter fermions. So uh, for every one of these, you should imagine there's an antiparticle. There's a positron, there's antimuon, antitauon, and there's antineutrino for each one of those. So there are six elementary quarks that we know of, corresponding to one, two, three generations or families. And for each one of those, there are antiparticles. Um, so there's 24 elementary fermions. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, some of the, uh, I guess this is a good time to kind of look at their properties um, in a little bit more detail. So we've been looking at their charge or we know their charge already. We introduced the fractional charge of the quark and how that came to be deduced, even though we've never seen a quark. One, uh, and you've been told some of the masses already. You know that electron is about half MeV. So this is in GeV per C squared. So um, th this is the digit for MeV. So it's electron is about half MeV. Good. You know muon is about 100 MeV. Good. So one other feature I should point out is tau lepton, or tau on, is 1.7, 1.8, almost a 2 GeV. It's almost a twice as heavy as the proton. So, um, so lepton is a more of a historical name now. It, lepton, it used to mean that it's light, but today what defines a lepton isn't that it's light, because if that were the case, then tau quote unquote lepton couldn't be a lepton. The really defining feature of a lepton has to do with the interaction. So when you look at the interaction, um, so this is the, the second row is the particles experiencing these four types of interactions. When you look under strong interaction, only quarks and gluons uh, um, participate in the strong interaction. Leptons do not participate in strong interaction. Lepton has no color charge, so does not participate in strong interaction. So that's what defines a lepton. So even though the tau lepton is actually heavier than uh, most of the heavier than the first two, two generations of quarks, or it's heavier than many of the baryons, it's still a lepton because it does not experience strong nuclear force. Okay. Uh, quarks, um, so we spent a lot of time, talk, last time talking about the kind of um, guess at the strange quark, Sometime talking about the discovery of the charm quark, and I glossed over when bottom and the top quark were discovered and confirmed. I think uh, I looked up the dates. Top quark was finally produced in 1995 or something. Um, so, okay, I guess there are some, yeah, but people kind of knew top quark had to exist before that. Once they believed in the quark model, and once they found the upsilon meson, which is the bound state of bottom quark, then it's a matter of, um, it's like, you know, if you believe in the periodic table of elements, then the undiscovered elements, you know, they, you believe they exist, even though people haven't actually found them yet. Um, so, all these quarks, I will tell you, describe to you one odd feature. It's the masses of the quarks. So you've been told this um, fact or statement. You've been told that proton is made up of two up quarks and a down quark. And you've been told that neutron is made up of one up quark and two down quarks. Okay. Uh, what's the mass of proton approximately? One yeah, about one GeV, right? Per C squared, if you're being, um, um, yeah, if you're being consistent with the units. <laughs> um, uh, and neutron is also about one GeV per C squared. 
Now, I invite you to look at the mass of the up and down quarks. Those are in units of GeV. Does this look like about three times up and down quarks? No, right? So um, I guess this is what it, um, it, so these numbers are hinting at a, a physics underneath that we didn't spend any time on. And that physics it's uh, hinting at is that um, these up and down quarks inside the proton, they are relativistic. So most of the mass of the proton is not in the rest energy of the up and down quarks. It's uh, in the, the total energy of up and down quarks. And really the more faithful model of the proton and neutron is that they are not just made up of these three quarks. These are sometimes called valence quarks or valence quark content. So this is the net quark content of proton. Really a better way to think about proton is it's made up of up and anti up, down and anti down. And these are kind of spontaneously produced um, in the kind of complicated strong interaction that these quarks are undergoing. This is part of particle physics that um, people have yet to figure out because um, they're, yeah. <laughs> so, but all these quark and antiquarks, they cancel each other out when you're adding up for net quark content. And what remains is this balanced uh, quark content. But really a more truthful representation of proton is that it's made up of a, a lot of indeterminate number of quarks and antiquarks. But when you add them all up, you have net of two up quarks and one down quark. Okay. Um, and same for the neutron. So that's uh, what those mass numbers are kind of hinting at, that um, if you're simply glancing at the chart, you could easily forget. Um, these heavier quarks are actually easier to deal with in the quantum mechanical model of the nucleus or the model of uh, baryons and mesons because they are become heavy enough that uh, you can use non-relativistic quantum mechanics or you know, not the quantum field theory. Um, so like the bound states of bottom quark are um, more easily dealt with than bound states of up and down quark. So yeah, I guess that's kind of everything here that we can spend time on. Sorry, I don't have access to my clock. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, one more trivia. So when we say fermion, we do mean spin half particles. So spin one half, three halves, five halves. But as far as we know, all the elementary fermions have spin one half. We don't know of any elementary uh, spin three half fermion. Uh, at least not in the standard model. I guess I don't know enough particle physics theory to know if there are any super symmetric partners that spin three halves. <laughs> but all the known elementary fermions are spin half. Um, all right, so that's uh, probably enough of the fermions. Um, okay, um, 